Hi everyone, welcome. I'm down here in my wormery preparing to check in on a couple of my Red Wiggler worm bins. As you can see, these two systems are not running exactly identically to each other. I've got one bin over here. The younger system is covered with only cardboard and paper. And the older system over here has got plastic coverings. And that only happened during the last check-in 10 days ago. I actually swapped the top coverings. So up until the last check-in, I was actually covering up the uh, younger bin. I mean the older bin with the paper and the younger bin with the plastic. But it did seem during the last check-in that it would make good sense to swap them to, um, to deal with the moisture situation. Which seemed to be getting a little bit drier over here in the older bin. So we thought we would try to protect against further drying by covering up with plastic. And over here it seemed like we might want to allow for a little bit of drying. So we swapped the covers and when I was preparing today's feeding I actually came down here with another similar plastic cover. This plastic bag is the same type of see-through plastic bag but it tore so I thought that perhaps we could use it as, um, as a second plastic cover. Bring them both up to speed with having plastic covers if we thought that it was right to do so. I mean we could always go the other way we could just remove the plastic covers and switch over to um, paper coverings for more breathability if we decide that's the way to go. So it's really going to depend on how things go in here. And you know, what we did in here was sort of a little bit of a test. I was running, I was running a piece of soiled, oily piece of paper towel, of which there's some of it remaining right here. That oily piece of paper towel was this size right here and it was two ply and it was actually over in this bin underneath the plastic while the plastic was still over here we separated the two plies because we noticed worms had crawled in between the two plies of oily paper towel and then after we had two pieces of oily paper towel we figured why don't we do a little bit of a test see if we can motivate the worms to eat that thing and what we did was we coated it with we coated one of the halves with worm chow and it seems that that piece was completely consumed so in pursuit of the worm chow, the worms came over and they nibbled away that oily piece of paper towel, but this one remains. So perhaps the oil on the paper was just enough to keep the worms from being interested in coming in and nibbling on it. But as soon as we put a little bit of worm chow on it, the worms took right to it. So over time we've just been sort of trying to see if an oily piece of paper would get eaten by the worms and after we initially noticed that they weren't interested in eating it but they were interested in crawling between the two plies of paper we um, separated the two plies and then we took the test up a notch and we tried to see if we could motivate them to work the stuff down if there was a little bit of worm chow sprinkled onto it so interesting to see that a piece of paper resting right beneath the plastic covering right where the recirculating moisture is constantly survives so long in the worm bin without being eaten presumably because of the fact that it's oily but also easy enough to be um, circumvented and overridden because even though it was oily the fact that we put worm chow on it seemed to interest the worms enough to get them to go after it so just sort of an interesting series of events that have transpired with that one piece of paper towel over there <laughs> over the past few check-ins. So I've got, um, as you saw before, I've got an assortment of different stuff like um, cucumber peels and cantaloupe rinds and even some corn cobs. A couple of the corn cobs even have some of the kernels resting on them still for the worms to nibble off. So we're going to be giving that to them as they're feeding today. And then I think at the end, if we decide that the systems could both be covered with plastic, we'll just use that other piece of plastic as the top covering, and we'll sort of demote the paper only, paper slash cardboard coverings, and possibly just use those as bedding, you know? So here in the system that we had actually covered up with, with some plastic since the last check-in to try to hang on to the system's existing moisture and not let it further dry. I'm seeing some leftover stuff here. This is the leftovers of some corn cob that the worms are gladly continuing to work on. And um, 
More recently, I've been deciding that I'm going to just continue helping corn cob bits get broken down by, you know, chipping them into littler pieces when I encounter them. And I believe that by doing so, we'll gradually be able to make them vanish a little bit more quickly than we normally see them go in the past. And it's interesting, too. I've even got some pieces of uh, potato peel that have been in here for a few check-ins now, just going very, very slowly. Usually, I freeze my potato peels, and I probably would have frozen those, too, before bringing them down here. But perhaps I just didn't leave them in the freezer long enough. Maybe I had just placed them in the night before and then decided to feed them the following day, and... Perhaps they just didn't really freeze through for some reason. I'm not quite sure what the reason is, but those potato peels are not getting broken down at the normal pace that I observe potato peels normally getting eaten at. But they'll eventually go. No biggie. So we've definitely excavated a pretty good size hole here. Over here I feel like I'm looking at maybe a little piece of shredded plastic, which I think I'm going to exclude from the system. It just looks like a little piece of see-through plastic that doesn't really belong in the worm bins. Yeah, we've definitely got ourselves a nice good size hole here. I've got a number of uh, napkins that I bought home from my mom, so I figured two big yellow fancy napkins and two white fancy napkins per bin. So I've got twice as much as what I just showed you there. So I figured we'd use that as bedding in today's feeding. Now over here where we were only covering with um, paper, it was because last time we probably felt that the moisture level had gotten to the point where maybe we would see some benefit to seeing the system lose some of its moisture content by having only paper and cardboard coverings. But at some point you might want to just say, hey, we don't need to see any further drying. The little bit of drying that we enabled was enough and let's just let the system hang on to its moisture content and I think that's kind of where we're at here I don't see any particular reason to continue on with paper only coverings here I think we could probably cover up with plastic here too and then we will have um, achieved sort of a, another little thing that has been in the back of my mind for the past 33 days since we've um, been running these two systems as buddy bins which was to perhaps sync them up with having like covers when the time came to do so and not force that to happen. So I didn't want to force it. I just took these two systems with their existing covers and last time it seemed last time it seemed sensible to swap them based on the, the needs of each of the systems. And on this go around I feel like we could probably bring in that other piece of plastic to cover up and not allow this system to dry any further. I don't think it would be necessary to see the system dry any further. So that'll be kind of cool to be able to get them in sync with each other and have similar top coverings to one another. And you know over here in the younger bin, it feels like I've got so much space that I could add a whole lot more bedding. It almost feels like just for the sake of backfilling this available space with a little bit more than just those couple of napkins, maybe we're going to bring in my leaves. It was not too long ago that I went outside and I replenished my supply of leaves. And then I went pretty generous applying this stuff in a couple of my systems recently, but I've still got plenty here that we could use as the foundation for today's feeding of these two bins, but over here where we've got perhaps a little bit more space, maybe I'll just sort of double up the um, portion, and give them a little bit more, just because there is plenty of room. And you know, now that we're going to be coming on with um, paper, I mean plastic covers on these. I was kind of wondering about that piece of paper, that newspaper that was top covering with that piece of cardboard. I thought that perhaps maybe we could um, tear that thing in half and utilize it as new top covering in both bins. But we've still got that piece of um, 
paper towel. You know, I'm still wondering what to do with that piece of paper towel. I'm questioning whether we even want to keep pursuing its progress. It seems like if we were to just include it down in the feeding, then it'll probably get eaten, despite the fact that it was kind of oil soaked. At this point, I think if we just position it near some foods, it's pretty much certain that we're gonna see this stuff get eaten at this point and not have to track its progress any further. I mean, it was kind of interesting finding worms crawl in between the two layers of the two-ply paper towel. And then it was also interesting today to see that they'd gladly eaten one of the two oily pieces of paper towel after we coated it with some worm chow. But I don't know if there's a whole lot more to be done with regards to testing that piece of oily paper towel. So maybe we'll just include it down here in the feeding, right here where it was. Because as soon as we start piling some yummy foods onto it, I don't think it's going to last. So let's do just that. Let's start bringing in some of these delicious foods that we set aside for them. I've got cantaloupe rind here. So we'll drop in some of that into both systems. So we do have a good bit of dry paper and leaves down in each of these feeding zones. But you can see, look at all that frost coming in with the cucumber peels. We're bringing in some moisture content with the food that we're giving them. The cantaloupe melon also has moisture content to it, which will come out of it as it thaws. So my hope is that besides the moist foods, perhaps the um, perhaps even the moisture in the surrounding material within the bin will also aid in moistening that uh, that dry bedding that we applied beneath the feeding. Because we'll also be covering up with plastic now in both systems. And I think by doing so, that'll really help keep the moisture down within the system, not letting it evaporate. And then that moisture will just keep recirculating and making its way into those bedding uh, materials down low. And despite the fact that they're dry, I think that will change by the next time we come in here. I mean, we might come in here and find some still dry leaves down there and um, maybe even a little bit of still uneaten uh, paper um, fancy napkins but that's all right at that point we'll simply blend it all together yeah look at this beautiful castings material definitely no need to see any further drying of this stuff it's also nice and crumbly i mean it's definitely Definitely got enough moisture content to, you know, support worm activity because there's plenty of worms hanging out in it all over the place in both systems. I mean, over here where we had gone with the paper only since the last feeding, it does actually feel to me like it's perhaps a little bit more damp over here. Perhaps things are a little bit more dry over here. But you know what? At this point, I believe we're simply going to harmonize the top coverings, get plastics on both of them. And at least from that regard, they'll be sort of bought into sync with one another. Not that it's so important. I would definitely always be striving to give the bins exactly what they need and not try to um, comply with some sort of a sense that they need to match or appear the same in any way. But at some point, I figured it might be nice to actually get them set up in a similar way so that we can do kind of side-by-side -side comparisons. I mean, there is a 60-day difference in the ages between these two systems here. So this system right here, the one I'm plowing through right now, is the older of the two. And um, this system was 120 days of age on the day that we matched these two together as buddy bins 33 days ago. So we're talking about a 153-day old system here. And the younger system was 60 days of age 33 days ago so that makes that one 93 days of age today 
and they're coming along really nice. Lots of castings piling up. The material flows quite freely in both systems. It does feel to me like it might be flowing just a little bit more freely over here in the older system. Perhaps we've got just a little bit more moisture content over in the younger system. But I'm questioning whether or not that's going to be the case next time we check in here with all that dry material that we just placed in here. And something else we hinted at earlier was the idea that we might take this piece of newspaper which was used to cover up only one of the systems previously and share it and commission it as a top covering. One piece going in one system, the other piece going in the other system. All the more helping to harmonize the appearance of the two systems to help match each other. Like I said, not something that I was really overly concerned with trying to accomplish, but I figured if at some point we would be able to, then why not? Let's do it. So here, I didn't bring any coffee or replacement coffee filters, so we'll just reuse what was already here as our feeding zone indicators. This one over here is definitely some, making some good progress. This one over here has been holding out pretty good by being underneath the, um, the more porous and more breathable covers, but now we're coming on with plastic in both systems. So we'll get one of them covered up here with the older piece of plastic that had been in use over here and then in can come this next one right here. This one I decided to take it out of food storage service because of that big tear I caused in it. But I think for the purposes of covering up a worm bin to help the system hang on to its moisture content it should work just fine. So that's it everyone, that's our check-in now with our recently paired up, a little bit over a month now, paired up systems. And they're both doing great, if you ask me. I think they're doing great. And um, I guess that leaves us with one little piece of uh, sort of orphaned piece of material here. We'll definitely find something to do with this at some point soon. <laughs> but I'll set it aside for now and I'll take care of getting stuff cleaned up and put away too. But I'm not going to waste your time with that. That's boring. Before I go really quick, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye now.